Hello students, welcome to chapter 3, Fiber to Fabric part 2. In the previous part, we discussed about the learning objectives. We discussed a correlation between fiber, yarn and fabric. And then we found the two sources of obtaining fibers, the natural and the man-made. And finally, we discussed the differences between both natural and man-made fibers. Now let's proceed further. Cotton or vegetable wool is the most important soft fiber crop grown in India. They are obtained from the seed pods of the cotton plant. It grows best in warm areas with black soil. Cotton is sown during the spring season and later the flowers develop into spherical pods called bowls. Cotton bowls contain soft, white, fluffy fibrous part and that is attached to the seeds. Mature cotton balls burst and the seeds become visible with the soft fiber. Harvesting of the cotton balls is done when the pods are completely dried up by the sun's heat. The cotton fibers undergo a lot of processes before we obtain cotton cloth. Let's have a walk through all these processes. The first one is ginning. Now ginning can be done by hand or it can be done by machines. It involves separation of the cotton seed from the fiber. The separated seeds can later on be grown into cotton plants. Coming over to carding. Carding is done to straighten the fibers so that it becomes easy to spin cotton fiber into thread. The fiber may be combed at times to remove the shorter fibers. Here we have the two processes being done by hand using the brushes and by machine. Spinning is a method to make yarn from fibers. It involves drawing out of the fibers from the cotton bundles and then twisting them into long continuous threads. On a small scale, takli or hand spindle is used or a spinning wheel also called charkha in India is used. On a larger scale, the spinning is done with the help of machines. A question at this point of time. You must have read about Gandhiji promoting charkha. Now the question is, why did he do so? Put on your thinking caps and keep thinking. He did it to promote local manufacturing of clothes instead of importing them. Also a science fact, cotton clothes absorb sweat and also allow movement of air. So they are suitable to wear in hot and humid weather. Weaving Weaving is a process of mixing two threads of the yarn together to get a fabric. This process involves interlacing of threads at right angles to weave the fabric. Weaving is done on looms and they can be hand operated or power operated. So we have the hand loom and the power loom. Finally comes knitting. Now knitting is a process of turning thread or yarn into a piece of fabric by forming loops which are pulled through each other. This is done by hands using needles or by machine. Knitted fabrics are more stretchable than the woven fabrics. Example, sweater and socks. Activity time. In this activity, we are going to weave with colored paper strips. The materials required are two colored papers, scissors, pencil and a scale. Method. Take the first sheet and fold it into half. Draw parallel lines using pencil and scale. Cut the paper along these lines. Cut the second paper into strips of equal size. Weave the strips by interlacing them. Our weaved product is ready. After following the activity steps for two colored papers, in this case yellow and green, we get the final product as G. This was done by weaving, that is interlacing two yarns at right angles to each other. Jute is the second most important fiber crop grown in India. It is obtained from the stem of the jute plant which is grown in hot and humid areas with sandy and clay soils. It is cultivated during the rainy season and is mostly grown in West Bengal, Assam and Bihar. Jute is harvested after six months when the plant starts to flower. The plant is cut from the bottom of the stem and is tied into bundles. Thereafter, these bundles are immersed into water for two to three weeks. This process is called Retting. Due to retting, the stems rot, leaving the fibers behind. The fibers are then removed by hand, cleaned and dried. Jute is used to make a lot of things like ropes, doormat, bags, toys, carpet, shoes, 
curtains and wall hangings. Fire fiber is obtained from the outer covering of the coconut. This covering of the coconut is called husk. To obtain coir, the husk is removed and soaked in water for a long time. The husk gets softened and is often beaten to obtain the fibers. The coir fibers are then spun into yarn. These are thereafter used to make the rope, the coir fabric, doormat, coir pots, brushes and other garden articles. Coming over to a science fact, which is an interesting one. Why do we wear light colored clothes in summer and dark colored clothes in winter? Put on your thinking caps and keep thinking. We wear light colored clothes in summer because light colors reflect heat which helps to keep our body cool. Whereas dark colors absorb heat and thus considered to be worn during winters to keep us warm. India is among top 10 wool producing countries around the world. The wool is obtained from the animals like sheep, llama, camel, goat and rabbit. A quick science fact. Wool obtained from rabbit is also known as angora. Wool needs to be removed from sheep and other animals. The process of removing wool from a sheep is called shearing. After shearing, the wool is cleaned and spun into fibers. Woolen clothes retain body heat and thus are good to be worn during the winters. Let's see a video which tells the story of wool. The earliest evidence of silk being used has been traced down to be in China. China, India, Brazil, Japan and Thailand are few of the major silk producing countries. The rearing of silkworms for producing silk is known as sericulture. The silkworms feed on the mulberry leaves and thereafter they build a cocoon around themselves. The fiber is strong and shiny. The silkworm is killed by putting the cocoon into boiling water and thereafter cocoon is unwound to obtain silk. Silk saris are the most famous product from the silk. The clothes that we wear today are quite different from the historic times. In ancient times people used to cover themselves with animal skin, fur and plant leaves. After settling into agricultural activities, the humans learnt how to weave twigs and grass to make baskets and mats. 
Early Indians wore fabrics made out of cotton. Needle was invented almost 40,000 years ago and people started stitching fabrics to make clothes. It is amazing to see people wear sari, lungi, dhoti and turban as an unstitched piece of fabric even today. Let's summarize the chapter. Cloth made from yarn or fiber by weaving, knitting or felting is called fabric. Depending upon origin, fibers can be classified as natural or synthetic. Natural fibers are obtained from plants and animals, example cotton, jute, coir and wool. Fibers are converted into yarns by spinning. Yarns are converted into fabric by weaving and knitting. Weaving is a process of interlacing two sets of yarns to get fabric. Knitting is interlooping of one or more set of yarns to get fabric. In ancient times, the humans used to wear animal skin, tree barks, leaves, etc. before they learned weaving. Here are some keywords which have been used throughout the chapter. Fabric, cloth produced by weaving or knitting textile fibers. Fiber, a thread or filament from which a vegetable tissue, mineral substance or textile is formed. Ginning, the process of removing the seeds and debris from cotton. Knitting, the act of forming a fabric by looping a continuous yarn. Retting, soaking of jute stems or coconut shells in water. Spindle, a straight spike usually made from wood used for spinning, twisting fibers such as wool, flax, hemp or cotton into yarn. Spinning, the process of taking textile fibers and filaments and making them into yarn. Textile, a type of cloth or woven fabric. Weaving, the craft or action of forming fabric by interlacing threads. Yarn, spun thread used for knitting, weaving or sewing. As an extended learning to this chapter, you may check for the material used to make a shawl, figure out how are pashmina and angora wools different, which technique is better for making socks, spinning or knitting. Does retting cause pollution? If yes, suggest ways to reduce it. Find various ways to put on a muffler. What is the role of dyes? Do clothes become attractive after application of dyes? During silk extraction from cocoon, what will happen if the silk form is not boiled along with the cocoon? With this, we come to an end of part 2 from the chapter Fiber to Fabric. Hope you have understood your concepts well and in case you have any doubts, please write a mail to learning.space.mk at gmail.com. We'll meet again in the next chapter. Until then, happy learning!